Marshy, welcome back on, son. How welcome, are we? thanks for having me, mate. Yeah, good. Like you said, it's been uh, over 12 months. Last time we did this, I had uh, her. <laughs> I was... Uh, I was not an engaged man. <laughs> I had two fully functioning knees, so uh, like you say it's been a tough twelve months uh, for everyone, but <laughs> me as well. Talk about your knee, mate. How, how are we getting on? Yeah, um, we're good. Uh, you've <clears throat> obviously see you'll see me there today working on it. Uh, I'm about seven months in now since my op. Six, six, seven months in. So hopefully in a few weeks be ready to play again. But um, yeah, it's been a been a bit of a. A crap Shit injury in it to have. Yeah. Obviously, the ACL ACL injury Marsh had. Um, obviously, it's not ideal, is it? But it is pretty common in in our sport, especially. Um, but you know, like I said, I've been working with Marsh here, um, and you've been doing everything you can to get back out there, mate. So, like I said, we're coming towards the the back end of it now. But yeah, oh, um, good. how's it been for you mentally, physically? Like, obviously, this is your your first proper ACL. I know you had this. A cautionary one that we'll yeah. say that we a couple partial, of lads say that you, you faked her. it. But um, how's it been, mate? Obviously, injuries are a tough part of sport. But how have you, you know, dealt with it? And yeah, it's good. I think like um, with it, it's such a serious injury. And but you like you said, a lot of sports like lads get it. I think that's uh, that's what gives me like the confidence is that you see a lot of boys come back from it and uh, like return to, to to bigger and better than what they was before. I think uh, <laughs> shout out to Don Manfredi. I think. Uh, <laughs> There's probably not a, a player in in maybe world sport who's yeah. who's had as many knee operations he's the knee guru, and injuries. Yeah, so he he's taught me through uh, stage by stage and, and each step of what to do. So yeah, we're, we're flying now, back doing a bit of running and that, and uh, did a first session with the boys the other day. So score that trick, I believe. Uh, yeah, free, free training tries, but uh, <laughs> no, I don't think they can quit off my dad for each one of them. But yeah, <laughs> all good. We're, we're we're back. It is a it is mad, like you said. This kind of injury, you know, probably when when my dad and your dad would have played, could be you know career kind of over in it. So it's it's mad to think, you know, how how far the science has come on, and you know the physiotherapy we get is, um, you know, is really good. So, um, what what will it be now? Seven months, you say? So it's coming up for seven months, I think, on the twenty third of this month. So and have you have you got a game in mind that you you're looking? To uh, get back to? Uh, we've had a look at a few games. Time frame wise, I think there's a game on the 12th of June, which is Huddersfield, um, yeah. which is a potential one. But I think we'll just take it week by week now and see how I feel. I don't want to pencil in a day. You know what they're like? They'll, yeah. they'll, be, they'll be trying to get me in. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what did you say that has been the hardest bit about the injury? Oh, with me, is getting my uh, getting the full range of movement back. I found yeah. everything else pretty, pretty all right. I've not had many other hiccups other than that. So I'm taking a sit, a sit at home. You'll find me uh, in, the, in the kitchen at home with a kettlebell dangling off my leg trying to trying to pull my leg straight and, and then bending and that but other than that i think it's been pretty sweet um like leg, leg was a bit flabby for for a, for a long <laughs> period bit of a bag of sick but yeah it's getting there now there's, there's some muscle coming. it is a, it is a brutal um brutal injury i've just seen uh elliot minicello at Hulkiano. he's yeah. just had his acl he just posted a picture um on his twitter i think he's 10 days post-op now yeah. you can see obviously all the uh sta the, like, staples yeah there. staples in and scars and that and yeah he, to it be fair a, yeah he, he's had a he looked like he had a tough one i've just reminded me back to my app but yeah i think like uh, mentally and that i've been been pretty good it's good yeah. to, we've been i've been lucky that my rear's coincided with pre-season so yeah lads are not in lads are all looking around and getting in together then anyway so um how did you find lockdown um you know talk us through a bit at Wigan, how we handled it and, and how you personally handled it. Yeah, obviously, uh, the last time we was on here, I think when I look back, it was the 22nd of March, 2020. Jeez. So, it's crazy, so over a year now from, from that. Um, obviously, things were, were normal then. Yeah. Completely normal. We were playing in front of crowds, could go out for your tea, um, <laughs> didn't have to wear a mask in the shop, all that. And then, uh, obviously, COVID it. And um, we are where we are now. But like you said, lockdown. I think um, it was a strange one at first. It was almost like you was on school holidays, yeah. Wasn't it? And you yeah, just was, sort yeah. of the weather had like timed itself perfect. It was it was dead sunny. I think my lasting memories is just sitting sitting in the garden because I just had my garden finished. Me and my dad finished the garden. Yeah. Sitting in the garden uh, in the sun, and then playing footy. We played so oh, much we football. Did play a bit of foot I forgot about that. You know, it, like you said, it was kind of it was ideal because we had really good weather yeah and like you said we obviously we don't get much time off when we play rugby so you know for the first five six weeks i, I, don't know, I was loving it it was yeah. good to just have a bit of a break just freshen freshen yourself up freshen your body up and like i said we was, we was having a game of footy yeah. on a saturday 
Um, you know, you got the garden done. I had I my garden finished. So yeah, it, it was pretty fun. It was. Um, we played, we um, I think we, we played Salford, didn't we, on a Friday night? Yeah. And then there was sort of whispers that at one point there were going to be no crowd, and then there yeah. was a crowd. And I remember um, Chris Brooks Doc coming on the bus. Yeah. And literally saying. Um, he doesn't know what's going to happen on the country. So I'll take her. Yeah. See how you are. Because we was, we was actually, I don't know if you remember, we had three days off after that game. And then we never came back. Yeah. After well, that. I, yeah, because it was different. Obviously, you was playing, I was injured. Um, and I remember I went down to London and remember coming back up and not feeling so great. And then yeah. all, all this COVID stuff was flying about. So I actually had two days off before the lads got given the three days off. Uh, and obviously, Dr. Chris Brooks, he's the uh, the Wigan doctor, but he's obviously very high up in um, the NHS and at Salford Royal especially. So we we was kind of lucky. We got kind of more info, more info than most people yeah, it was like, through whispers, him, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. And then we just sort of said like, oh, you'll... I think he initially got shut down for three weeks, didn't it? The, yeah. the, the, they said, oh, the, it'll not be back any sooner than whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, so we was in for in small groups. So it, it, at first, the first part... We almost trained pretty hard thinking, oh, there'll be a game soon. Yeah, yeah. And then as it got on longer and it was sort of stay at home <laughs> by the government, it was literally like, well, there's no end sight. We'll just like, sort of ticking over. And then like, another three weeks have passed. And it was just like, oh, mm. just do what we want now. I was taking footballs on backfields and yeah. going for everyone was doing 5K times. Bike rides, everyone. Bike rides, yeah. 5K times. Everyone became a personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> what about it, 5K on? Like you said, it was it was actually, it was good to just have a bit of a, a bit of a break. Yeah. Um, but like I said, four or five weeks pass and you soon realise, you know, it, it did get a bit boring. Um, obviously, it was dis different for you. I know I struggled with it a little bit. Obviously, I had uh, my shoulder reconstruction. Yeah. So, you know, I was I was training to get back fit for that season. Um, and then due to like lack of equi like gym equipment, at home, obviously not everyone has a gym built at home. Yeah. I know I certainly didn't. Um, so, yeah, it was tough for me because... Obviously, I'd started the process of, of getting back and having physio treatment every day. And then obviously at home, we wasn't allowed to see anybody. Um, so it kind of, it put me back another couple of months, really. I know when I originally was meant to return, when all the boys did, you know, I had to kind of start, almost start again. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you, you were sweet. And then not long after that, I think you obviously suffered with your ACL, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, three games in. So we did like small group training, came back. We did about, it was like a two week pre preseason. Yeah. Um, and then I played the first, well, I played two games in 10 minutes. Played at Cass, at Wakefield, and I've, uh, sorry, at Warrington, and obviously did my knee. So I think, like, you, I was looking forward to, to playing with you because I yeah, haven't played, played for a while. In a while for, yeah, so, we haven't, yeah. Uh, I was thinking, oh, Gilly gets back fit and he'll, he'll come back in the centre, but obviously yeah. didn't work out that way. And um, oh. yeah, obviously did Did, the, did, did the you knee. find, obviously nobody knows, but do you think your knee could have not been right due to having that amount of time off? Obviously, yeah. work with us, Athletes, you know, like I said, we barely ever get time off. We used to train all the time at a high intensity. Do you think that could have led to maybe? Yeah, it's probably something I'm not properly thought about. But yeah. like, remember when the NRL first came back, there was a few knee injuries. Yeah, there was, yeah. And um, people were saying, oh, it's because they've had such a long time off. But in terms of my body, like, I felt fresher than I've ever felt because yeah. I've been off for so long. But yeah. then I was probably a bit heavier than what I would have normally played at. Yeah. So there's probably is other factors that you could say, oh, maybe if... Maybe if you hadn't had all that break, it wouldn't have gone on. Maybe yeah. if you weren't carrying that extra weight, it would it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened. But it's just something that you. Got to deal I'm, I'm sort yeah. of don't. Well, it's not going to change. I, I think it's not. Got, it was never going to change the fact that I'd done it. So no. But, but but there probably is some some science somewhere that says that such a long period of time for top top athletes is not what yeah. is, is not the best, and it could obviously increase the chance of injury because there's been other lads with injuries and different things, aren't there? Yeah. When we came back from lockdown, so. I think it just probably took probably you needed about six weeks to readjust yeah. and get back into that form because you you can do all the running and we all know you can do all the running that that you like it's and, and flog yourself stuff, but it's not yeah. it's not tackling it's not carrying a ball in there could be something behind it I honestly believe that like I said we've obviously been playing rugby from 11 12 years old and been non-stop un until uh, until then to be honest so it's no coincidence that lad did struggle with muscle injuries and obviously you did your knee and stuff like that um and like you said, in other sports especially. Uh, but it's just kind of the, the world we had to live. We had to deal with it. Um, it's, it has been a crazy year. And like I said, we are, we are coming to the back end of it now. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but it, how's it been? How, how have you been? How have you found this this pandemic? I know a lot of people have struggled with it uh, mentally. I know you're you know a funny lad. And um, 
I, I don't think I've ever seen you have a sad day, to be honest. No, but, um, I don't have many. I think, um, like, if I, if, I, if I was at home alone, I don't think I'd have been as good. But obviously Meg, uh, teacher, and obviously she got yeah. shut down and was doing bits of home and that. And just sort of after the first few weeks, just thought I'd take it as like a big holiday and try and enjoy it. And obviously yeah. um, that's n of no offence to people who had it tough because it, yeah. it's, it's a serious pandemic. But I think like staying at home and staying safe, I think I literally was going to the shop, picking up a bit of food and yeah. literally just sat in the house doing the occasional bit of running. So I, to be fair, quite, quite enjoyed it. The weather was decent and... Uh, yeah, we we just cracked on, rested up the body, and did you oh, did you find it easy or hard to motivate yourself? I know I personally found it tough. Yeah, I tough. obviously I had the injury, um, which you know is is never good, and it was a pretty serious injury as well. Like I said, I was on the road to to getting you know back to full fitness, and then I, like I'll I'll agree, I'll admit I uh, I struggle with it. I found it hard, and know we got given some gym equipment from yeah. Wigan, um, and and I did. St as soon as we, you know, we had a couple of weeks off and we got given running programs, I was, I was at it every day. I was smashing through it, but it soon wore off. I think I don't yeah. know how long did we actually have off in the end. Was it four, four months? months maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and you know, and we we get it good, obviously being professional athletes, so it does make you realise how tough people have had it. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in especially in our area, but all over the world, really. Um, but like I said, a bit bit more positive news. We are coming to the end of it now. Yeah. Um, Things are opening back up. We're in Olive Garden today. Um, tables can be booked from the 17th of yeah, this month, innit? Under the 17th, it's all back, indoor we've, dining. We've just been, me and Mark have just been checking the new kitchen in the back there. Um, looking good, innit? It's, yeah, it's looking unbelievable. I know Mike's got a new menu planned and, um, you know, really looking forward to he, He's Mike's obviously not been able to open for, what's it been, over a year now? It's a um, good though. I, that, I tell you what, that uh, OG to go got me through a oh, yeah, few of the that, tough days. That was brilliant. In, to uh, in lockdown, getting the uh, pizza pasta delivery because it's like two minutes from my house. Yeah, you live pretty close. Uh, yeah, drop offs. Oh, yeah, what is your order? Um, what did I used to order? I used to get the seafood. Linguine. I like, I'm a, I'm a bit of a starter man, me. I like Ooh. little picky starters, so mozzarella sticks. Winner. The little, do you remember the little mac and cheese balls? Yeah, unreal. Little mac and cheese breaded balls. And then it'd just be a pizza. There'd have to be a pizza in there. He did a, um, can't think what it was called, but it was like a creamy based pizza. Yeah. Chicken was on it. Might have been spinach, pesto. That was good. And then. Um, Starving now, thinking about it. Yeah, carb, carbonara, standard, yeah. stock, go to. Because they got the new kitchen and they were like the new, pa the new pastas and that. Yeah. Carbonara. It was unreal, wasn't piece. it? Like, talk about tough times, obviously. We know Mike personally, um, great guy. And like I said, he's not been open for over a year's yeah, time. It's, it's um, tough for people. So, you know, people have been doing it tough. Like I said, we're, we're in a privileged, privileged position. Uh, we get to play rugby professionally, but, you know, it's great to see things opening up a bit now. You can yeah. see Mike, you know, he's buzzing to get everything open. So, you know, if anybody is listening to that, uh, to this podcast, you know, definitely get booked in uh, Olive Garden. Yeah. Best Italian in Wigan, easily. Italian. I know all the Wigan boys, we always eat here. Yeah. Marshy, uh, Marshy's always in here on a weekend. <laughs> That's why I put so much weight on in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, so Mike's to blame, to actually. He wants um, nice food. And I'll have to have a word with him. Right, I'm going to talk about you. Uh, you popped the question to Meg. Yeah, I did. So he's the first one out of uh, all our friendship group who, you know, we all played together at St. Pat's. Uh, Marshy was the first one to uh, to get engaged. So talk me through that, mate. How did it go? And uh, was you nervous? Yeah, I think uh, I was nervous. I think it sort of... Um, I only decided late on to do it, so we were going away to the lakes on a Saturday, and I, uh, I made my mind up Wednesday night. Uh, I drove to Trafford on. Now I drove to Meg's mum's on Thursday morning, asked her, yeah. and then shot to Trafford. Bought the what ring. was that like telling the bird? Like the uh, thought of that makes yeah, me shit myself. I just like usually just I I don't usually like text Meg's mum too often, so yeah. I just dropped her a message saying you're in tomorrow morning. Yeah, I think she was sort of expecting something. <laughs> um, she she jumped she fucking jumped into my arms when I got there <laughs> when I when I said and then I shot over to Trafford uh, bought the ring and then yeah I think we trained Saturday morning and I brought it in the in the car man and then yeah we got up to Windermere and popped the queue but I think um, it was the right time because uh, like I said knee I'd, I'd just done my knee I think yeah I'd, uh, I had the op booked in the week after I proposed the, the Saturday after yeah. Uh, Obviously gone baldy, all baldy so far. He's dying her down. I, I cannot leave it any longer. I thought if I if I leave it any longer and she sees me next week, uh, propped up on the couch. So did you get, obviously you got down on one knee? Yeah. Which which knee is it? What you did? My right knee. I can't remember. I think I got down on my left. I don't forget I got down on my. Is right. there a, is there a certain way you got to get down? Is there, is there a knee you have to go on? No, 
Traditionally. Knees no. just, it's just, just down on the knees are traditional. Yeah, yeah. beggars can't be choosers. No, no. So, yeah, so we've, we've got some uh, exciting times coming up. Obviously, we've got your wedding. We've got your stag do. Oh, yeah. So all the lads are going to Vegas. So it's going to be, I think, most of our Hectic. first trip. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be uh, a definitely a loose one. But, yeah, looking forward to it. We've got our own little WhatsApp group um, yeah. with our lads who are going. Yeah, so. we start. start so so I, that was one of the first things on, on my mind, I think, so... Pop the question, got the congratulations, and then in the afternoon while we waited to go out uh, for some scran in Windermere, yep. made it like banged a message in the group saying, "Lads, I'm keen for Vegas," which I obviously haven't detected. Didn't that lads are much to to jump on the back of that. So we started a little WhatsApp group. There's like eleven of us in there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Originally it was called the Vegas Betting Group, but <laughs> so we we decided we'd have a little kit each week and we'd all take turns putting bets on. And we've been that shit that the, <laughs> it's not the it's podcast not that, is. Uh, the, sorry the. Kim WhatsApp's now called the, the Blackpool Betting Club. So <laughs> I think we've got about, we've been doing it, what, what is it now? Probably like, well, it's Ooh. nearly half a year. Yeah, we've half been a doing year. it now, and I think we've got about 500 quid between 10 of us. So <laughs> we might get an airport Might get a couple of bottles of water. Yeah, an airport drink and a, and a bacon butty, but that's about as far as we're getting so far. Uh, yeah, like said, we've not been brilliant at the betting. Um, so if anyone has got any um, yeah, tips, bang, tips them in. bang them in, comment on the Instagram post on I offload, think, yeah, let us know. The struggle's going to be. Uh, Football's finishing, isn't it? That's the that's yeah. the struggle. Obviously, we can't bet on rugby or we'll no, be banned. No, um, that's, that'd be silly. But we would never do that anywhere. But no, we're not stupid. But uh, yeah, we just chuck on whatever we can. We'll be betting on a, uh, we'll be betting on all sorts horse racing all over the world, or or just chuck it on under a little under 19s football. Yeah, under 19s football in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That'll be the thing. Uh, obviously, one of my mates, Dan Edmondson, he's he's sorting the trip out yeah. for us. Experience VIP. So yeah, shout out. if um, if anyone does want to book um, a stag do or anything like that, Dan is the man. Yeah, he's um, been good. He's been good to be fair. Yeah. Self-proclaimed Mr. Vegas, he yeah. calls himself. Yeah. Nah, he's, he's a good guy and he's he's helped yeah. you out a lot. Nah, and, he's, um, uh, he's put a little itinerary together for the lads Thursday to Monday. I think we're looking like so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm buzzing to be fair. Yeah, I wonder who will be the next one to uh, pop the question. Might be you, lad. Could be me. Potentially could be me. Nah, does it? Got could, quite a few in love, haven't we? A few, uh, there's a few in the little, uh, in the in the stack. I think I've put the pressure on, really. You have, actually. There'll, been a, be few, there'll have been a few little uh, elbows in this rib from the missuses afterwards. Jake Shorts could be. Uh, Shorts up there. Nick Gregson. The, yeah, Nick's another one. Yeah, there's a few of the boys. Um, Cal Duffield. He's no chance, that lad. No. He found him a girlfriend. Yeah, not a chance. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, positive stuff. Everything's opening up back now. You know, for us both returning to injury yeah. soon, so we can, you know, hopefully finally get to play a good run of games together. Um, we got fans coming back. Are you looking forward to uh, having the fans back in? Yeah, I think um, I'll ask you about the grand final in a minute. But just, just that popped to me. I had the grand final last year. Like, yeah, I've been to obviously 2018 and missed the grand final with with an injury, but yeah. the crowd at that is it, like crazy, something yeah. you never experienced. And then going from Old Trafford 2018 to to playing it all in a grand final, yeah. and I think probably out of the people in the crowd, I made the most noise. It was absolutely <laughs> dead silent in a, in the biggest game of the year. It was that was probably the toughest thing. You miss them, don't you? The yeah. as much as like you get a, a lot of fans that that are sometimes negative. The the vast majority are positive, and yeah. I think. Like especially when we play at home in big games, like they, they give you that. It's not something that you you can't, can't put a value on it. No, like you can't, it gives you that true. extra bit when, especially like we say we do a, a good set and we put someone in a corner, yeah. and like the crowd ramps up yeah, and you see the boys get a bit 10%, of enthusiasm and that. So talk about the grand final. Yeah, you know? it's funny that you've said that. Obviously, I was injured, so obviously you boys had played in front of crowds, so I didn't know really what to expect, and I didn't find it too. Too bad to be honest. When when I first got back, but like I said, when you start playing in these bigger games, the semi-finals, the final, oh, it, it, it was. I, I just felt so sorry for the lads whose first grand final it was yeah, the likes of your Ollie P, your yeah, Morgan Smithies, Smithies, because I remember in the tunnel, like the hairs on the back of neck stand up now thinking about it, and obviously you, you listen to the song, which I always forget. What is the song? What Jerusalem. Is it? is it Jerusalem? No, that's that's Wembley. That's Wembley. What's the song? Anyway, we'll we'll find that out another time. But <laughs> you, you obviously you, you're in the tunnel and you listen to that and you can hear the crowd roaring, the fireworks go off, and it was just such a different experience. Obviously, it was a, the exact same setup as how it was, but you walk out and it's an empty stadium, and um, yeah, it, it was difficult. And obviously, the game itself, I just picture how that game would have been with a fa with you know with yeah. a packed stadium. Um, obviously. So disappointing. I've probably never been as rattled after a game as nah, that. I couldn't believe it. I remember when I came down 
we came down onto the pitch after the game and then obviously came into the changing rooms and it was like you can hear a pin drop which is not really something that's strange for a losing dressing room but it was like a weird atmosphere yeah it was almost like you, we hadn't lost it was like i don't know i can't i, can't describe, I just remember for like 20 minutes after the game no one really spoke like mm. people were having little conversations and it yeah. was almost just like we we hadn't won but we hadn't lost it was just this dull like yeah feeling and then i think it was of, great for the sport of rugby like as a as an outsider as a fat look i'm yeah. um i was so rattled i got beat you never want to lose but i think like, it must have been such a good game, a spectacle to watch. To yeah. watch. Um, and yeah, I, I just, in my head, you know, I broke I broke my wrist in the first, I think it was first or second minute of the game. Um, I thought I broke my, obviously I broke my thumb previously and I couldn't grip, I couldn't do anything. I remember saying to Jacko, like, mate, my, I'm fucked here, like, yeah. my, my wrist has gone. And um, I got in at half time and just got the cortisone injection just to try and, you know, numb it and, and play through it. And I remember looking to Budge and, Thinking, wow, if we pull this off, this is going to be unbelievable. Yeah, Budge had cracked his cheekbone. Yeah, I remember. I'd broke my wrist. Um, and I was just thinking, oh, this is going to be an unreal story. And um, it wasn't to be, but it's sport. You can't always get everything your wow. own way. Um, I think, it's, but I think like, that spurred us on. And I think like we see like, the way we, the way pre-season went. Yeah. Like, pre-season has been tough. And I think that's because everyone's wanted to have a crack, really, haven't they? I know I've yeah. obviously not been... Um, involved in a lot of the on well any of the on-field stuff with it with a knee but like i know you've that's probably last year's like you've usually been a, like last year you've usually been away in international duty or you've had a niggle but last year you did a full pre-season and i think it's, it's set the boys in in good stead and like i've been watching and, and itching to to get back out there and i'm sure hopefully in the next few weeks we'll be both both rowing to go there, yeah. yeah i think it was definitely a good learning experience um for most of the lads like i said my first grand final, um, obviously lost to Leeds, but I took a lot out of that game. Uh, and you know, I was lucky to go and win it the year after. Um, but like I said, that one, that one hurt so bad. It, it I usually, if, if I lose a game, I'll think about it for a couple of days, forget about it. But it, it took me a while to get over that. Um, probably didn't help that the pandemic was on and we couldn't go away. We used to go obviously go away on yeah, holiday. Get a break or not, or nothing. Get a break, take your mind off rugby. But it was just obviously stuck inside and everywhere you went you know you see it so it was yeah it was, it was all over. I, I remember guy always watched videos on facebook and that me and it would kept coming on my suggested videos and yeah. i didn't even play and it rattled me i, I remember like, you know, like, game back. so like you said about going away like usually yeah. straight after the season like um the training ground's dead there's no yeah. one there yeah like, i remember I, I was in on the monday after the grand final obviously injured and there was like boys in there training and i thought as much as it was a shit game and a shit ending, like yeah. it's good because like lads were itching to get back yeah. into it. I think just sort of get, do something a bit different to your mind. I think the fact that you couldn't go anywhere or do anything, that was probably a, a contributing factor. But yeah. yeah, I think it's hopefully it's set us in good stead for this year. Yeah, you'd, you'd like to think so. Like I said, um, we had a lot of young lads playing the first grand final. Obviously, we had you missing. Um, obviously, it was, it was a shame we couldn't get it done for lockers. That would have been really good. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it's it's sport. Me and you both realise, you know, not everything goes your own way if it's injuries. Um, obviously, we're both out injured at the minute. We've spoke about we're obviously returning. Um, I know it's been a frustrating time for me. Obviously, I broke my wrist in the in the grand final. Like I said, I got I had the opportunity to have this full preseason with the lads. Managed to get through it all, and then I think the week or two before yeah, right. I ended up stepping, Getting got a little tear in the uh, in the adductor. Rehab that for a few weeks, tried to get right for round one. Um, had a steroid injection, stepped, and then obviously tore my groin. So not I don't think not many people know this. Not really, it's not something you speak about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating. You know, injury is probably the worst part of what we do. Um, but like I said, the po it's, it's all positive from here now. We're both coming back soon. And, um, you know, we've got, got that trophy to win at the end of the year. And... Um, Obviously, the news have come out this week about I am leaving yeah. um, at the end of the season, um, which is obviously going to be sad. Like we said, we've played rugby together from being the age of 11, but you know we've got an opportunity this year that we can both go, you know, as hard as we can to get that grand final ring and um, you know make some some unreal memories off the field. So, is that is that your main priority? I know you've been unlucky; you've missed out on a couple of grand finals now, but it would be great that we could, you know, finish with that at the end of the year. Yeah, I think obviously the extra motivation with with you uh, with you leaving at the end of the year for anyone who doesn't know Gilly, time for West Tigers for next year, which is exciting for him. But come back to that in a set. But like you said, yeah, I'm excited and hopefully go out with, with one of my, my best mates and, and and win a grand final. Like you said, I've been unfortunate enough to to miss two and not have 
chance to put my stamp on any of the games or, or contribute to a win. So uh, hopefully get a ring at the end of the year. But yeah, Gilly, so like you said, um, sad to see you leave, mate, but um, a massive opportunity for you over in Australia. So um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts? What are you excited about? What are you looking forward? Um, yeah, obviously uh, uh, over the moon, you know, to, to get the deal done. Um, it's something as a young kid I've dreamt to doing. Um, and it's it, like I said, it's, it's probably not, sunk in yeah i don't know when it's gonna sink in i'm hoping sometime soon but yeah. um yeah look it, it's I, i've i've made it obvious uh, over the years i would like to go over and test myself um you know and look i've got the opportunity to now and i know the hard work starts from now on um but yeah i'm really looking forward to it it's going to be you know a great challenge for me personally and um yeah something to be to be very proud of um you know my dad had the opportunity to go over when um I'm not sure what age, but he had to turn it down due to my mom and family commitment. So he's always said to me, you know, uh, if you do ever get the chance to go over, make sure you definitely do. It's yeah. probably one of his biggest regrets. Um, I think I'm at the right age to go over now. You know, I still think I'm, I've not hit my prime yet. I'm, I'm still pretty young. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's um, something I've always wanted to do. It's uh, It's going to it's gonna be sad leaving yourself and you know the boys at Wigan it's all I've ever known I've been at the club from being 11 years old um but yeah we'll we'll probably shed a few tears like we've already said um at some point but I think you know ev everyone gets to a point in the in the career where they've got to move on like I said, I've probably done 12 13 years maybe more yeah. uh playing at this club uh, I've loved, loved every minute of it um it's everything I've always wanted to do um but yeah I just think it's time for a change and like I said I've got the opportunity to go over there now and um, you know, I'm going to take it with both hands and, you know, hopefully do really well. Yeah, it's mega exciting for you. I'm, I'm buzzing for you and I think you'll kill it. I think it's um, obviously you probably told me a few weeks ago and uh, about it and like, I think that sort of spurred me on to get back fit and hopefully yeah. you get back fit and play some games together. I'm in Gilly, like you said, have played together since we were 12 and hopefully we can sort of get to that, that pinnacle of winning a grand final together, which would be, which would be something else, it'd be class. Yeah, it's, it's it's probably not often in sport that like, you you do play with your best mates. Nah, it's, rugby's weird, isn't it? Like, yeah. Because you get like you, you don't see it in, like football lads become mates because they play together. But like yeah. a lot of lads in rugby generally have known each other since he was 11, 12, played on yeah. the same team. Like families know each other. It, it, it's like family. You that's I think as we're going at a club as well. We're we're like that, and we a lot of the boys yeah. play together and stuff. So yeah, but. So we can so we can get one at the end yeah, of the year. That, that'd be it. that'd be honestly unbelievable. Um, it's probably only me and you left now from our friendship group or oh, our age group. It's dropping, isn't um, it? Like? But like I said, it you know we're very privileged that we've been able to play professional rugby together for so long, um, and a lot of our other friends as well. Um, but it, you know, it does come at at some point you have to part ways, um, and it is always sad to leave. But like I said, another uh, window of opportunity is opened yeah, up. It's and a good time. And I'm sure some something will for you, uh, but I'm just focused on on playing my best rugby for Wigan this year, yeah. uh, making the most out of it, enjoying my time, and um, like we said, hopefully winning that trophy. Probably takes a bit off you, like because obviously you've been unknown and been in talks for months or weeks or whatever. Yeah. And now you, now it's out there and people are going to know you can, that weight off your shoulders a bit, and you can yeah. just focus on putting everything into to Wigan, can you? And man, let's go. On, yeah, it is a weight off my one, shoulders. It? it is definitely a weight off my shoulders. Um, it's just obviously not ideal with being injured at the minute. You know, I'd, I'd love to be out there playing uh, every game for Wigan that I can. But like we said, it's just part and parcel of the sport. Um, you know more than ever that we, you know we work hard off the field to try and get right. And and yeah, like I said, I've obviously told the lads this week that I'm leaving. Um, I managed to hold it together. I didn't manage to cry. I, I did. <laughs> I did get a lump in my throat. And it was coming on. The bottom lip was uh, was shaking a little We're bit. But I did cut it short. Just I couldn't be asked with all the lads taking the piss out of me. There'll be honest. plenty more times. It'll be the end of the year. Little little presentation, little video for Gill, and it'll be, it'll be sobbing. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm consoling. It does get pretty emotional, doesn't it? Um, I know last year, obviously we had Lockers retiring, Budgie yeah, leaving, leaving, Benny, Benny. Wellesy, um, and you know you do think they're all these tough rugby lads, but it does get quite emotional. I've seen yeah. quite a few I lads cry. Believe, Budgie's was the one I couldn't believe. Yeah, but Budgie's like like. Joker of the room yeah, and he he dicking about having a good crack and then like so they got up for the uh you presented him you presented yeah, his shirt and he yeah. got up to give his speech and he just like you could just see in his face and his eyes and he's and you're thinking he's gonna cry yeah. and he couldn't get his words out. It, yeah. it's, it's good to see though, like obviously the grand final didn't go our way, but I remember when he's done it with us uh previously when we, we used to train at Oral, I think it was before I don't know if it's too well, we've done it every every year in the grand final. 
he's always pulled us down in the changing rooms. It's kind of a dark room. Everyone's sat, you know, in a circle or whatever it is. And you just go around one by one and just say what it means to you, this yeah. game, what it means to your family. And it, it, within a couple of minutes, somebody somebody starts speaking and starts I'm crying. Right, right. It just sets everyone off. It's like a domino effect. It's like you just want to go and play a game there. And yeah, then you, no. it's, it's crazy what it does to you. And like I said, we've had some, some success doing that with uh, under Wayne. Yeah. I know something I definitely love doing. Um, and it is, you see some characters, you know, shed a few tears. Never you speak, because you never speak about it. You never, yeah, never obviously chats, you don't very, but well, you never have really. And then when it's it, like an environment rugby yeah, where you don't no. kind of show that side of things, but I, I love it. It's something I, I really enjoy doing. Like I said, we've had success, um, with Wayne doing that in 2016 and then obviously 2018. So I was in the 2018. I remember I, um, I got asked to, obviously the, the, the lads presented each other's shirts. So I got asked to do Dom and Tom. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, before it, so I, the night before I remember I sat down and I, I wrote a few things on my notes just so I had something to read off. And I thought, oh, I'll be fine. I'm not going to be like yeah. nervous. I'm all right at chatting and speaking yeah. and stuff. And I remember as I got up and I was like, as I sat there in this meeting, thinking it's it's a big moment this for yeah. these lads, like for the for Dom and, and Tom. And I remember speaking. And I remember even myself, like getting a bit. You get emotional and you get riled up, and then obviously, like presenting someone with a shirt and talking, yeah. talking. And like you said, as rugby lads, we don't we don't do that very often. But yeah, I think I'm looking forward to to Gil's speech. I might uh, put my hand up for the. Oh. For the prezzo at the end of the makes me nervous thinking about it because <laughs> obviously like we said everyone everyone has a bit of a sheds a few tears but within 10 minutes you're getting the piss took out of you yeah so you'll come out of the meeting you'll look cried everyone will give you an hug say wish you well and then in five minutes you'll be getting pissed took out you've been cry baby downstairs yeah it's uh it's a brutal environment what we what we're in yeah, but I, we? I wouldn't have it any other way to be fair no. um we got a great bunch of lads at wigan um like i said i'm, I'm gonna be gutted to be leaving but um yeah i just think it's time for a change and um yeah can't wait to can't wait to do it is that is that round us up for the last 12 months or what what's that oh yeah, yeah stitch your foot wedding that is true Reckon or the stag good. well the stag do that, that could be one where i stitch I think it, yeah well i'm thinking it'll be like you know like on hangover when uh <laughs> when they when they get a little polaroid camera at the end of it and then they flick through and see what images yeah we definitely still can't give that. me a shave that's the only thing I can't, I can't can't be I'm already balls so we're all right. I'll have to uh, promise Meg you won't be coming back with a Mike Tyson tattoo. <laughs> somebody will. Somebody will definitely. Yeah. My dad. <laughs> My dad. I forgot your dad's coming in here. <laughs> Class. Yeah, but, but that, that's another thing we, we obviously spoke about here a little bit before, but um got the stag do coming up, we got your your wedding day. Um talk us about the venue, how you how did you pick the venue? Did you have any say or did Megan kind of just uh so take over? I, uh, Proposed on, I think it's proposed on 17th of October last year. Yeah. Um, and my op on the 24th. Yep. And then Meg was obviously keen as keen as mustard, which she will be. She's a new a new bride to be. So yep. we, she booked in some venues for the weekend after my op. Jesus, not messing about. No, she weren't. So we went looking at one place, um, and then the place we actually booked that we've picked, uh, we went on the Saturday, and I was rattled. My knee was killing. <laughs> I was, I'd had about three hours sleep. I remember I just got into this place. Like the woman was dead, dead nice. And I was yeah. like, could not be arsed. Yeah, yeah. Sat on a chair on the side. Meg proper loved it. And I was like, oh yeah, it's all right. Like, no enthusiasm. <laughs> no energy, yeah. So then we had to go again to this place. And I like, well, Meg loved it. So I, and I liked it. So it pretty much picked. But yeah, weren't really that stressful to be fair. It's not, it not? I don't know if it's just because I don't really stress about things. I just like, I think it's I more of a girl thing, and it it's more yeah. a stressful thing for well, a like girl. Well, like the stag dudes, the male. Bit. Yeah. I think everything else. Like, I've sorted music. Yeah. Um, I don't think if I booked anything else, music, but everything else, flowers, table arrangements, cake, okay, everything. I don't even. There's a long list of things. Meg yeah, sorted. Is uh, Finchy coming to the wedding? Who got set from Finchy? One o'clock till two o'clock. <laughs> it's uh, definitely looking forward to it. Like we said. First, first one of the lads out the friendship group to be getting um, oh, to be tying the knot, shall we say? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I hope it all goes well for you, mate. And yeah, um, well. hopefully we uh, we have we me. have no divorces in the future. Oh, but no, fucking hell. I, uh, I can't see that <laughs> happening. Um, it's been it's been a mad year, hasn't it? So I think we're have we missed anything all the last. I suppose that's some, that's that is something that you'll always remember that you got proposed. Well, you proposed in a pandemic. Well, we we always speak about. It. I reckon if I don't, I reckon if I. If I hadn't have done it the weekend that I did it, I don't because we were sort of coming out of lockdown a bit. Yeah. And we went back in, and I was saying to Meg, I don't know when else I'd have done it. 
Yeah. Because I went, obviously I had my op and then I'd have been like off feet for like probably another four months, four, yeah. four weeks or so. So I know I just, just how it happened, it lucky really, but. Speaking about lockdown and that again, I know I'm bringing it up, but what, what did you think the re, the most recent lockdown has been worse or the original one? Well, how many lockdowns have we had now? Three. Three. Two. I think this last one's been the toughest. So I enjoyed the first. Yeah. I think it was the novelty of it, of yeah. like just being at home. Yeah. And then I think, so because we sort of got a sniff of like things being back open. Because mm. I remember like, yeah, what? I've had it. Oh, uh, yeah, that is. Yeah. Well, we both COVID patients. Yeah, COVID we both victims. had it. Uh, but then because we got yeah, a sniff speak about of it, of going out for your tea, like doing yeah. your things a bit more normal. And then we got locked down again and it was like, fucking hell. Yeah. Man. Help out to yeah, eat out. That, that was, I yeah, went out a few, went out a few times. Me. And then, then it was like, we got shut down again. I think because it was winter and that, it was crap. But hopefully, touch wood, no. <laughs> I'm well. just thinking of a funny story about uh, obviously having, having the COVID. I know oh, it's, it's obviously not, it's not a serious, it's a serious matter, but this is how I had to diagnose myself. So we're playing Leeds in the Challenge Cup semi-final. And um, I've woke up in the morning. Don't, okay, we'll not do that. We'll, let, we'll cut that bit out. I was just going to speak about, I'll, I'll, sp I'll speak about, right. So I woke up in the morning, we had the Challenge Cup final game. Um, obviously a massive game, one game off Wembley. And I just remember waking up and couldn't, couldn't taste my breakfast. Um, so straight away I was thinking, oh, if I'm ill or anything, obviously that, that's probably one of the, the biggest symptoms was yeah. loss of smell, loss of taste. Um, and that's why I'm obviously flapping, thinking, oh my God, surely I can't have COVID. Like, it's the biggest game of the year. Like, there's no way this can happen. And um, yeah, obviously drove into training, didn't know if I had it or not, um, but kind of had kind of had it in, my, in the back of my head thinking, you know, I think I've, I've got COVID here. And uh, I remember turning up to training, sat in my car and I, I just didn't feel right. Cause I, and I rang obviously Chez, who's one of our physios. And I just said, look, mate, I said, I can't taste anything. I can't smell anything. Obviously, it was it was really like serious. And so he said, right, so make sure you stay in your car. We'll ring the club doctor. So they sent me home. Obviously, I couldn't play in that um, that Challenge Cup Did game. Did you miss the game then? Yeah, yeah, I missed the game. I was I, I was thinking in the back that. of my head, do I just not say anything, get through it, and play like? Yeah. And to be fair, I'm kind of proud of myself that I didn't because um you know if I would have played, obviously I'd, I'd ended up testing after the game and did have COVID, but. You know, if I would have played, I could have infected. Yeah, the whole Budget, team and all that. Whoever yeah. it was, and then if we did win and we go on to Wembley, we'd had no you know, players. I, yeah. I've potentially, you know, made lads miss out in yeah. you know playing at Wembley, which I, I just couldn't have lived with that. Nah. Um, so, you know, that was the isolation's tough, isn't it? Yeah, and then obviously you isolate for ten days, you can't taste anything. It was um, it was tough, and it I felt the effects of it. Probably up until this this season, maybe a few months ago, I honestly st still like, was struggling. I know a lot of lads struggle with the breathing when they was running. I know Liam Burns st yeah. struggled. Uh, I don't know how you felt personally, but yeah, I had to come come back and then we played St. Ellen's at St. Ellen's. Um, it's probably, the, prob I'd probably say the toughest game I've, I've played in. Um, it was at their spot and we ended up getting a win in the end, but I don't know if it was due to me having COVID and obviously not being, well, like, I think that was my first or second game back, but it was tough. It was tough to deal with, and I know a few lads have, have struggled with it who did catch it, unfortunately. Yeah, because um, we had the big, we had a bit of, we had a bit of break at training, didn't we? Yeah, we uh, obviously had a bit of an outbreak. I as well. caught it, and then I think there's probably there's a lot of lads who got it. I yeah. think everyone sort of had different experiences with it. I just completely lost taste, mate. Yeah. And I, I remember I was, it was, it was, it was, I think it was Valentine's weekend. I went to the butchers in Standish and bought like a fifty quid steak pack. <laughs> And I cooked it and I could not taste anything. <laughs> and I was absolutely fuming. Been buzzing for this steak for about a week and it oh, tasted a cardboard. Well, it didn't taste so, of anything. It's so weird how yeah. with, you, with your taste. Some, can't explain, but it, it made me appreciate having, you know, being able to taste and smell my yeah, food so it's, much. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's the oddest thing, isn't it? When you, and I have read stories. Some people haven't got the taste back. I have read different things about that and that, different things, you, how you can do it. Yeah. Um, but like we said, here we are, we're coming... To the back end of it now. Um, Glad I've got my taste back for the old yeah, the restaurants taste, opening the taste on Monday. Is back. We've got Olive, Olive Gardens opening up again soon, so we'll be piloting here most weekends. It's coincided with a kind of a celebratory feed after we're both back playing. It's coincided yeah, that, that with that is things. true. We'll, we'll have to um, let Mike know and I think come. That's, I think that's what everyone's looking forward in. to most, isn't it? I think. Well, I think I am. Yeah. It's like being able to go to a 
go and have a drink, go and yeah. go some decent food inside. Yeah, we got some good times coming up. We've had obviously yeah. shitty last year for everyone, um, but like we said, everything's hope. Hopefully, you know, getting back to normal. Yeah, um, we've got some good sporting events coming up. You know, we spoke about the Fury Joshua. Um, me and you are Team Fury. Paz, Team Joshua. Um, it's, called, it's kind of a 50-50 split at training. Um, yeah, everyone has their own different uh, different views on it. I remember George used to be massive on AJ, didn't he, George? Yeah. Well, there's quite a few bo boxing fanatics in our team. I say, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a, just follow the crowd. I'm yeah, a bit of a sheep because yeah. I, if it's a big fight, I'll show a bit Box of interest, you. but I wouldn't say I'm, I don't delve into it as much, no. but I am definitely Team Fury. I'm a boxing nerd. I love, I love watching the boxing. Combat man. Uh, combat man, yeah. <laughs> we've, uh, me and Marsh have actually been, uh, we've been putting the gloves on, haven't yeah. we, in, uh, in our Terribly, pre terribly. Terrible. We, uh, I, there's no footage of us, hopefully, so. No, I hope not. We do a, on a, like a game day when the boys are playing, it's, um, it's called Brecky Club. It's just yeah. like a non-players flogging, basically. But for, yeah. what, for about three weeks in a row, with uh, Daz Marsh, uh, nutritionist. Darren Till's actually used yeah, to work with Darren work Till. With Darren Till. Um, so, I think he looks after his meal. His, uh, yeah, he's his like nutrition for like him nutrition, and that, but yeah. he's, Good on the pads and i think he used to box and he said oh we'll do a boxing session i was absolutely <laughs> goosed it's good though and it, it, it I, I love like doing different types of training yeah. obviously not rugby related but it, it, how hard is it look like? terrible though I look terrible but... two minute rounds oh it makes you appreciate how how tough and yeah, good boxing is though condition there speaking of um of darren till obviously we got Mike Grundy fighting this weekend. Yeah, we're uh, gonna. Obviously, Grundy's been on the podcast. Legend. He was uh, one of the one of the first ones to come on. Um, so we, I know all the team get behind Grundy every time he fights. Um, I've, I've been reading up on it quite a bit. I think the guy who's fighting is a bit of a, a striker. Apparently, he's, he's, he's pretty good on his feet. Yeah, so Grundy. obviously, we know Mike's a wrestler. So looking forward to hopefully getting Mike back on the podcast as well. Um, when the last time we did it, he went and he he lost. I think he, he won, obviously he won his debut. He lost his second one, uh, and obviously missed he's got with COVID, didn't he? Missed a yeah, he missed. COVID. Obviously, he's another one who missed. COVID. There's, there's quite a lot of people really when you think he's he's had the COVID situation. Um, but like I said, yeah, really looking forward to watching him this weekend. Um, obviously, we we've done quite a bit of training with him at Wigan. We use him for a lot of the wrestle stuff. So like I said all the boys usually get behind Mike, and uh, you know we're hoping we can get a win and get him back on. Be good to speak to him actually about yeah what UFC is like. What the UFC is like is obviously felt what it's like to have a loss. Uh, he's not lost. I think he might have lost once, one more time in his career. Um, so yeah, it'd be good to get him back on. We'll have me, you, and Michael have to have a sit. Yeah, down I like show. I like that he's actually like he's not just we've not just latched onto him that he's no. a Wigan fan. He's genuinely a Wigan fan. Yeah, and we've worked with him and that because we were for years with yeah. him before we trained with him before the UFC. And that he's a joke in wrestling. I remember, I, yeah, I can't think who they We were doing a wrestling session once with Mike. I remember um, um, he's obviously showing us wrestling techniques. And he's only, he's he like, well, compared to some of our props, he's only a small lad. Yeah, we so he's saying, like, do you 30, think, 40 kegs. Do you, think mm -hmm. you can keep like, one of them down? Like, if, if you go on top, are they moving you? And, he, and he's like, not a chance. And we was like, no, nah, they, they must move you. Yeah. They're massive. And I can't remember who he got on it. Marvin Lockers or someone like that. And they just fucking Bend leached him. him. Yeah. Couldn't get off him. Oh, fair play. He's a he's tough, isn't he? Yeah, oh, that you still enjoy the Grundy the Grundy wrestle sessions though. Yeah, there was there was actually just like, again, it's a bit different training from just obviously the standard rugby stuff that yeah. we do. So, and all the lads, um, the all lads enjoy it. It is it is good fun. Um, I know me and you fucking dick about in it sometimes. Yeah, but, but I do actually quite like it. But it is, it is tough. It's very tough as well. Um, obviously, we do that a lot in preseason. Um, well, we're, we're both kind of big sport fans, aren't we? I know we both love the football. We spoke yeah. about the Euros, um, our England team selection. Excited for that. Who, who are we saying for the Champions League final? What, what? I want. I think I want Chelsea to win. Yeah. But I don't see past City, me. I just don't see how, how Chelsea are going to beat them. To be fair, I just I think they're just be some season just some pure City, ammunition. Maybe. They've just got player after player after player. Yeah. But then I don't know because. Chelsea have in the last two big games, so they played them in the cup, yeah, and they played them in the league just recently. They've beaten both. I know they've changed teams and all that, but yeah. I just think maybe psychologically they could go and nick it. I'd love them. I'd love Chelsea to win, but I just I think it's, it's too much of a good story for City yeah. not to win it. Like they've had all these years of building up and Pep and that, and I just think they should. They, well, they should win. Yeah, I seen the thing actually on uh, Pep's record in finals. I think it's nineteen finals, eighteen wins. So. Fucking 
That is, that is surely crazy. they don't lose. You've got to respect Pep, though. Like, I'm obviously a massive United fan. I, I, I'd love to be there with United. But you got to respect... Like, I watched the, the series on Netflix with him. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Was, was it I'm proud. I'm Amazon? Prime, Am yeah. yeah, Amazon, sorry. And... Um, yeah, he just he just looks a top like a top guy and yeah. a top coach. I like those prime ones. He just the it's Mourinho good to have like that insight into different sports and like especially yeah. football. Football's a big love. one. I think like whatever sport, like even if you came down because we we've had like like I know we don't get as much exposure as rugby yeah. into doing football, but we've had like people we get people come down regularly, don't they? Watching yeah. what we're doing, we get a lot of football teams the, coming down. Yeah, coming down. Turned up once. Yeah, obviously yeah. this is all pre-COVID and what's yeah. going on, but like we've had footballers like. Academy directors at football teams just coming and seeing because like Wigan is like an outlier in rugby for bringing through young lads. But in yeah. terms of football, that's a completely different world. Is like the amount of young Wigan or academy kids that come and play first team. Yeah, like football, you don't see it, don't do you? You might get one in any, the, yeah. might get so that city city's team is signings and Phil Ford and yeah. United have got a few academy Rashford, projects. Greenwood, Rashford's yeah. the main one, Greenwood, but Tom, yeah. across the prem, you don't you don't see many many like that. And I think. Mm. Rugby, it's I think true. people could probably take a bit from rugby. Yeah, like you said, it's we like get the, undersold a bit, don't we, for what yeah. we actually do, for what we do, and what like what what we produce. No, it, it is frustrating. Like, obviously, we've come through the system, so we know how, you know how it works. But like you said, rugby is probably not a big, you know, as big as it should be. No. Um, but saying that, I have seen like recent um, viewings. Recently, and stuff I as, feel as like we're what, going up. Yeah. Obviously, we got the World Cup this year, so um, you know that's going to bring extra eyes. Is that they reckon it's going to be the first like event, world really. like yeah. big tournament with proper fans, don't they? It's, it's kind of a bit lucky, really. Like it's yeah, it's rugby. dropped. Um, so you know, hopefully we can we can get more eyes to the sport. And but I see like more recently, I've seen like obviously with with I reckon it's probably lockdowns out that, but like yeah. with the nothing to do and being sport on the telly, yeah. I feel like I see more people tweeting and interacting about yeah. rugby, about, about rugby, like watching it, doing, like Charlie Austin. Um, who is on Talks Boys yeah. like striker and I think he's at QPR. He was talking about like rugby league and like how good the game is and like, obviously when fans were there, you would say occasionally see football players. Yeah, and the league, odd ones like, come I think, in, yeah. Like, obviously, the more we you can get it out there, I think them because it, it, it like we're not just saying it; it's a class game to yeah. watch, isn't it? So yeah, it is obviously we we love playing it and. Um, like we said, probably doesn't get the credit it deserves. Uh, um, we're tough for them footballers too. Yeah. Well, we'll not we'll not go into that subject. <laughs> Bru I was watching Bruno again last night, and um, did you see it when he stayed down in the box. Yeah. Fuck me. It's frustrating, but I sp that's kind of the game in it now is to try and you know get other players sent off by you know milking it or whatever. But yeah. it's just not not how we've been brought up, and it's no, not how it's our sport game. is. It'd be frowned upon if we did that in uh, yeah. in rugby. Um. But Marsh, great to have you back on the podcast. Um, like I said, we're hopefully going to be able to get these rolling off now. Um, Once a week. Spoke to you. We're going to get you on as like a co-host. And um, get, we've got quite a lot of guests lined up. It's obviously been annoying. We've not been able to do it due to lockdown and the restrictions. But we're, uh, we're good to go again now and uh, got a lot more content coming. Um, yes. Get so, more yeah. If there's any, anyone who listens to this, comment on the videos. Let us know. If there's any players you'd like to see or any topics you'd like, a, like us to speak about. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, yeah, great to have you back on, Matt. Get some stories off people that you want to hear in the press or that you want to hear out there. And yeah. I think people bang in questions. Tell us things you want to hear. If we, if we line up a guest, tell us things you want to hear about them. Yeah. We'll try and get you things that maybe you want to hear on a Sky interview or, a, or in yeah. the newspaper. So yeah, it's good. I'm excited. And yeah, thanks for having me. And let's... Uh, See you soon. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll crack on and then get a few knocked off, like we've said. I've, I think how it's going to work, we'll we'll probably post on the offload Instagram page of guests we have got coming up. So, like you said, what Marsha just said with the questions, you know, interact with us as much as you can. Uh, me and Marsha are both op open people, and you know, we'll uh, we'll get the stories out there for people yeah. to hear. Answer and ask as much as yeah. we can. <laughs> Staying in the uh, lines, though. It's not. obviously both something we we really enjoy doing. So looking forward to getting it going now. Talking and, shit. Yeah, chat shit and um, <laughs> getting some good stories out of people. So thanks for listening and peace. Let's go, baby. I ain't ready to upload. All that coins up and smile.